Hello Aquarius, welcome to 2023. This is going to be a year that you want to journal. You want to pay close attention to the inner rumblings that are happening in your world, as well as the external manifestation of events that are going to correlate to those inner rumblings. Because you, Aquarius, are in for one of the most profound shifts that anyone could ever experience in their entire lifetime astrologically. If you are an early born Aquarius, you're going to start to experience it in 2023. But between 2023 and 2044, the planet Pluto will be in the sign Aquarius. For just a few weeks in 2023, and for half of the time in 2024, but then full time after in 2024, beyond. So that is going to be a gigantic life-changing shift. And, and I want to lead with that. I'm tempted to lead with that, even though it is not chronologically correct. So that's just going to be a little teaser. I'm actually going to backtrack and, and do the astrology in the correct timeline before we get to this big Pluto transit, because that is huge for you. So stay tuned for that. But as we begin the year, the planet Mars is still retrograde. Mars is the planet of action, energy. I call Mars the gas in your fuel tank. And Mars has been traveling retrograde in your romance sector, the fifth house, the area of your chart that also connects to children and creative self-expression. And Mars went retrograde here back on October 30th of 2022. Well, what's happening is as the new year begins, Mars is still retrograde in your fifth house and will turn direct on January 12th. So what you are figuring out right now is how to best use your energy, your creative energy, and what you are willing to fight for, push for, connected to your relationship with children or to your desire to have children or maybe to not have children. And also very big when it comes to love, romance, sexual expression for you, because the fifth house is romance and where you meet someone, start dating and fall in love. And the planet Mars very specifically is connected to our libido and the sex drive. So with Mars retrograde, you might be reevaluating this part of your life in a very big way. You might have lost your passion for someone or you might realize that you are stuck passionately on someone that you used to be with, who is either no longer in your life or who might have come back into your life and is possibly giving you the opportunity for a reconciliation. And this might just even be hooking up with this person again, you know, maybe just having a passionate one night stand or one week of one night stands with this person for whatever reason. So in Gemini, there is a duality, and it is very likely that for you, Aquarius, there's a choice between two lovers, two romantic paths, or there is a choice that you have to make connect to how you're using your energy in a creative project or how you are parenting or what, um, what your goals are connected to parenting. If It depends on the age of your child, but this might actually be reflected in your child's behavior. Maybe there's something that you can't seem to control or get a handle on as to why your child is acting out, whether it's terrible twos or teenage rebellion, okay? It depends on what your child's age is. But you're gonna get a handle on this. And after January 12th, it'll start to regulate and calm down. And you will really know what you want to Focus your energy on connected to fifth house matter. So then on March 7th, Saturn changes signs. And Saturn has been in Aquarius, has been in your sign for a little more than two and a half years. This was a no joke transit. Okay. You have been through it in terms of Saturn, the taskmaster, calling you out on your BS and saying, you got to grow up. It's time to be an adult. It's time to have a mature, responsible approach to your own life direction, to live your life with integrity, to live your life responsibly. 
and you have been building foundations around your identity and who you truly are over the past two and a half years. And a lot of you Aquarians have taken on a brand new responsibility that is very mature and adult-like. And it could be anything from getting married to starting your own company to becoming a homeowner, having a child, whatever it is for you in your life. It, the, the theme is adulting, maturity, responsibility. And you've taken this on willingly. The more disciplined effort you've been putting to this, the more of a reward you're going to get as Saturn leaves Aquarius. And Saturn does leave Aquarius on March 7th and enters Pisces on the same day. When Saturn changes signs, he's going to change the area of your chart that he's going to provide those lessons for the next two and a half years. And so with Saturn now leaving your first house, there's some kind of reward for being the adult and being the responsible person that's coming to you. And at the same time, Saturn is now saying, okay, Aquarius, what are you going to do about your money? How are you going to handle your finances? There's something about responsibly using your talents and abilities in a solid, stable way that we have to address now. A lot of you are saving for something, a big ticket item. Maybe now you decided you're going to save for a child's college education or for a down payment for your own home to invest in that business dream that you have. It's a big ticket item when Saturn goes through your second house. It's not small potatoes. And you are cutting the fat out of your budget and expenses in order to make sure that you have the resources to put into this endeavor, this financial expense, whatever it is. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen on March 8th. Okay, this transit's just beginning. Saturn's going to be in this part of your chart until February of 2026. So that is an important lesson about creating a solid foundation around your self-worth, your talents and abilities, how you earn money, and how you spend money. Big lessons ahead there. Now let's get back to Pluto in Aquarius. So Pluto has been in Capricorn and moving through your hidden 12th house since 2008, many years. And with Pluto in the most hidden part of your chart, what it's done, Pluto is the planet of power and control. And in your 12th house, there might have been some kind of feeling that you were powerless in some way, that life's circumstances were leading you. And, and you're not in the driver's seat of your life in the way that you want it to be. Well, now Pluto is going to start to visit your sign. Pluto is going to enter Aquarius on March 23rd for just a few weeks. We'll stay in Aquarius at zero degrees until June 10th. And I want you, Aquarius, to pay very close attention to what happens in your life during those weeks. Journal, record it, have some kind of a record. You're going to want to look back on this because it becomes relevant and it sets up the theme of what might start to happen in your life as Pluto gets firmly settled into Aquarius later in 2024 and beyond. So here are some things that might be happening. This frustration that you have perhaps of feeling powerless about something in your life is going to become untenable at this point. You're going to say no more. I'm taking control. I'm making a big change. And you're going to almost ruthlessly get into the driver's seat of your life and command control over your destiny, over your life. And it could be exciting and exhilarating because you, you're you tasting your own power in a way that you haven't felt in a long time, that you haven't been in touch with. It's always been there, but you've been blind to it for some reason or submissive about it. And now with Pluto in your sign, it's time to take back that control, to, to take back the sovereignty over your own life and your own destiny. 
And so Pluto in your sign can be so empowering. But Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, and transformation. So before you get to that rebirth and transformation, something has to die. And I'm not saying someone has to die. Something has to die. It is often a very symbolic situation, but it can come out in the physical world. And so there is something connected to your identity that will likely fall away as Pluto goes through Aquarius. It doesn't have to happen during these few weeks. And it won't start to happen unless you are literally at zero degrees of Aquarius. But if you are within, let's say, the first five degrees of the sign Aquarius, these weeks in particular are going to make it very clear to you what in your life needs to die, needs to go, in order for you to get into that seat of personal empowerment. You may not lose it during these weeks. It might just start to come to your awareness. Like for some of you, this might be when you finally realize that you're in a dead marriage or a toxic relationship or a dead end job or you know, whatever this is for you. You might finally realize that you've got to pay attention to your health because ignoring it is just going to bring illness and not wellness. Just trust me when I tell you these weeks are setting up a very important life-changing theme for you. And you all you want to do is be a scientific observer while Pluto is in Aquarius for these few weeks and pay attention to what you're feeling on the inside, what it's prompting you to want to do externally, as well as what life structures that are tied to your identity appear to be coming to their expiration date. And just be honest about that. Now let's talk about some cosmic luck and blessings. Jupiter, the planet of growth, the planet of expansion and abundance is actually gonna be in two different signs in 2023, which means he's going to move through two different areas of your chart. And he starts out the year in Aries. So that means until uh, May 16th, Jupiter will be in your third house of communication and short distance travel, and you might be taking more short trips, you might be writing that book or deciding to teach a class or launch a podcast, something with communications that's important. Anything with sales or marketing is favored during this time period. There might be a lot of growth connected to sales and marketing opportunities for you while Jupiter's in your third house. But then after May 16th and until May of 2024, Jupiter gets into your fourth house home, family, real estate. This is the area of your life that's going to experience a big growth spurt in the second half of 2023 and then the first half of 2024. And it actually gets even better in 2024 because the planet Uranus is also in your fourth house. And Uranus rules everything unexpected, unexpected changes. And you've had Uranus here for several years, Aquarius. So this is no surprise to you that when it comes to home and family matters, you've got to expect the unexpected. There's been a lot of changes. Many of you have already relocated or gone through family changes. Well, now Jupiter is entering and joining this fourth house party. And with Jupiter here, it's grow time. Wherever Jupiter is transiting in your chart, it's grow time. And what will happen next year in 2024 is that Jupiter will make an exact conjunction to Uranus. That won't happen in 2023, but it will happen in 2024. And when that happens in 2024, that is like winning the lottery, sudden windfall, sudden blessing in your fourth house. Okay, but pay attention to the growth opportunities that show up this year when Jupiter is in this part of your chart. So now I want to mention a Venus retrograde cycle because you, Aquarius, are going to have Venus retrograde in your partnership sector this summer. From July 22nd until September 3rd, Venus will retrograde in Leo and that puts it in your relationship sector. And this is business partnerships, but also personal relationships, romantic, committed, marriage. And with Venus retrograde here, you might be reevaluating whether or not a relationship is leaving you feeling fulfilled, 
feeling loved? Are you feeling the love? Are you feeling the joy with this person? Or has that somehow died? Have you lost the spark? You're going to be addressing that. And if you're feeling like you're having some kind of a creative block in a business relationship, and if it is now affecting you financially, that needs to be addressed during this Venus retrograde cycle. So now let's talk about the eclipses. The eclipses are busy for everybody because this year eclipses fall in four different signs. They are finishing up Taurus and Scorpio, where they've been for uh, since last year. And they're going to start to move through Aries and Libra. And that means four different areas of your chart are highlighted in 2023 with eclipses and potential significant life changes. In particular, the Taurus Scorpio eclipses are the most important for you because they're hitting angles in your chart. But on April 19th, we're getting that first eclipse in Aries and that will fall in your third house of communication and it will be next to Jupiter, expanding some kind of third house opportunity, either to travel, maybe this is when you wanna launch your podcast or your, your book or whatever this is contractually. This is an important time there. And you're going to have to get over your fear of not having enough power about this or somebody trying to control it from behind the scenes because this eclipse is square Pluto, which would be in your 12th house at the time of the eclipse. Then the next eclipse on May 5th is a lunar eclipse that happens at the top of your chart in your career sector. And this eclipse is going to throw a curveball, total curveball to your career path. And it might be related to a family situation because this eclipse is exactly opposite Uranus, which is in your fourth house. So some kind of unexpected change with home and family dynamics might necessitate a career shift for you. That is very possible. For others, this is an unexpected ending with career. Maybe you decide to retire early or decide to go into a different career path completely. Now in the fall, we get our second series of eclipses. So on October 14th, there is a solar eclipse in Libra, the first eclipse in Libra, and that eclipse will fall in your ninth house. And that might be an eclipse where you feel thirsty for knowledge or spiritual growth. You might want to learn a new language. You might want to go back to school and get an advanced degree, a license, a certification. You may want to study a new religion or philosophy. Or you may say, hey, it's time for me to travel abroad and go international. And that would be an eclipse that stimulates that for you. The last eclipse is on October 28th, and it is the final eclipse in Taurus, the final eclipse in your fourth house, home, family, real estate. That eclipse is making a supportive sextile to Saturn, which would be in your second house of possessions. So this eclipse could be very favorable for you if you're selling real estate, if you are looking to profit from a family possession uh, or some kind of fulfillment with family money connected to real estate or with family business, family money. It looks very fulfilling and stabilizing for you. All right, so Aquarius, I'm telling you, this year you are about to embark on a journey, a personal journey that is going to deeply transform you from the inside out. And it, it just starts to whisper to you in 2023. I want you to really just sit quietly and hear the whispers because those whispers have a very loud message that will affect you for many years to come.